In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the basic user interface of 3ds Max. So 3ds Max is divided up, like most 3D modeling programs, into a series of drop-down menus. So at the top, you can open the File menu. This is where you would save a file or save as. One unique feature to 3ds Max is um, you can import a file, and this would be importing a file from a different computer software. So something you made in Rhino or SketchUp, for example, you would import. Um, the other option would be to import merge. So this would be if you're moving from one 3ds Max file into another 3ds Max file. So import import and import merge. You can also export into different file formats for different softwares. And then some programs you can actually send the model directly into them, um, which can be useful. Next you have your edit menu. This is how you undo, redo. You also can move, rotate, scale from in here. There's another way to move, rotate, and scale over here in the toolbar, which is what you'll mostly use. But um, a lot of tools and locations for tools are redundant in 3ds Max. So you'll see the same tool pop up in a few different places, and that's just you know based on your user preference. Um, under tools, you have some options to uh, mirror and array objects, but not a whole lot we'll get into there. And then group, you can always group objects or ungroup objects. You can even open groups and then work on a, one object within a group and then close the group and then it'll be grouped again. Um, under view, you can change some of the views. Uh, you can create cameras from the view you're currently in, either physical or standard, which we'll cover later. Um, you can also create objects here. And so again, 3ds Max is redundant. So you can create an object here. For example, I can go create standard primitives box or you can go over here to what's called the command panel and you can select you know a box right from there and create it from there so either way works it's really just up to you you can also modify objects so in 3ds max when you build an object you can then modify it with different uh, modifiers so you can twist a box bend a box add a, uh, a texture mapping um, overlay on an object so all these different kind of modifiers are what are then applied to an object once it's created and these apply to everything from objects two-dimensional line work cameras lights um, different object types within max have different modifiers that you can apply to them and again these modifiers are redundant so over here in the command panel this is the modify tab and we'll talk about that in a second but um, all your modifiers will show up there next you have animations so if you get into any animation you could do that there Graph editors are, editors are also part of animation. Um, if you start rendering, you can render directly from the rendering dropdown. You can open the render setup to change the parameters of the rendering, or you can just render directly. You can also change some things like the exposure, control, environment, and effects, which we'll talk about later. later. Uh, you can also open the material editor. Um, a few other things on customize, customize user interface. Uh, you can actually change like the color and style of the user interface. One useful thing to do is always check your units. So if you get a customized unit setup, you can change your units. By default, it's just generic units. But since we're working uh, most likely in US standard, I'll select feet inches. Uh, if you prefer to work in metric, you can select metric. But I would make sure you're working to a scale, especially if you're working on like an architectural object that has real dimension to it. So I always start with US standard. This doesn't. Um, limit me to using metric units. I can always type in five meters and it will automatically convert it to US standard, but it's just a good way to keep things to scale as you work. So that's under customize user uh, unit setup. You can also change the way uh, the appearance of the UI. Um, there are some scripting options within Max and then um, some other things like the Arnold is the built-in renderer and there's some other tools. There's also a series of helpful tutorials if you get lost or have some questions you can always search these different forums to try to find answers. Um, you can always change your workspace. This is the default but if you prefer a different one you can change it here. Uh, below that is the toolbar. So these are a lot of icons that um, you use frequently. So again they're redundant but you have undo and redo here. So these are the same undo and redos as in the drop down menu. Um, a little further down this is your select tool. That's sort of your escape button. So whenever you want to get out of a command or stop using a command I just select this icon here which is select and that allows you to select different objects in your scene. You can also select by list so once you have a bunch of objects you can select from this list by hitting that button. Um, these are different selection windows so um, how you select objects and then these are used quite a bit. This is your move tool, your rotate and scale and we'll cover that later in a transforms um, tutorial but these are where they're located. 
Um, you can then move objects based on view or local uh, pivots, and we'll talk about that again later. And then you have your snaps here. So anytime you want to snap an object to another object or an, a corner to another corner of an object, you can turn on your object snaps, which is the three with the um, little um, magnet there. And if you right click on it, it'll open up your snaps menu. So here you can change all of the different snaps if you want to snap to endpoints or midpoints or, or what have you. Um, you can also change the, the grid, the size of the grid, and, and other kind of um, snap features here. If it's highlighted, that means snaps are on. If you click it again, it's unhighlighted, that means snaps are off. The next one over is the rotate snap. So if you want to rotate by five degree intervals, you could turn that on. If you don't want to do that, you can turn that off. And then a little further down, we have our layers menu, which is this one over here. And you can toggle between layers, uh, a list of all the layers, and then objects within those layers, or just a list of objects by object type. And those buttons are also over here. So toggle layer menu will we'll also toggle that on. Um, you can see it just brought it up down here, which isn't really necessary since I have the same thing over here. Um, but you can toggle that off. Uh, and then over here we have the ribbon. This is this uh, referring to this here. And this um, is for uh, working with edit poly objects, which we'll talk about later. So now you don't see anything really showing up here because we don't have any objects in the scene. But this is specifically for working on polygons, edit polys. This was originally called graphite modeling tools, uh, but has now been integrated into 3ds Max. Um, so a little further down we have our uh, material editor so you can click that button and bring up the material editor there are two different types we'll talk about later but this is really the interface you'll work on um, when building materials and then just to the right of that is our render setup so that's the same thing as if um, you hit rendering render setup um, or F10 is the shortcut by the way these are the shortcuts if there's a little number or letter that's the shortcut for that tool um, we'll close that for now um, and then here's our uh, layer menu, uh, object menu. So as you create layers, um, if I click over here to the layer menu, you can create new layers and call them whatever you want. Um, once you create objects, they'll start showing up and you can drag objects from one layer to another layer. You can turn them on or off by clicking this eyeball. Um, and whatever the, the cyan color um, icon is, is the current layer. So whatever you build will be on the layer that that is selected. Um, you can always right click and delete layers and uh, do other things uh, that you typically would with layers like freeze them and unfreeze them. Um, if you are looking at the object list you can always have a whole list of all your objects in the scene and you can filter it based on these object types over here. So if it's highlighted it will show up but let's say you only want to see lights you could deselect everything except the lights and then only the lights will show up in your scene. So. That's a really nice way to stay organized within 3ds Max, either using object lists or layers or both of them. So here we have the view ports. There, there are four to start with. Um, you can always select one and hit this button on the bottom right to maximize a viewport. If you hit it again, you'll minimize the viewport. You can see whichever one I have selected will maximize if I hit that button. Um, an easier way to go through this is to um, use these drop downs. You can always select here, for example, where it says top and then change the uh, viewport. So if you want to go from top to perspective, you could just select their perspective. Um, one thing that's nice is if you look at these shortcuts, it's really easy just to use the shortcut. So if I go to T, it goes to top view. If I hit P on my keyboard, it goes to perspective view. We'll talk about navigation in just a second. Um, but the basic navigation is middle mouse button and holding down the Alt key. So Alt middle mouse button allows you to orbit middle mouse button allows you to pan and then you can use the scroll wheel to scroll in and out but again we'll talk about that later um, the other thing you can do here is change how it's displaying so if I just very quickly create a box um, you can see uh, the default and this one is a wireframe and the perspective it's default shading but you can always change that for any of these so I could choose facets if I wanted or default shading typically I work with default shading and then if you go down here where it says edged faces you can turn that on and it will show you kind of edges on all of the faces which will be really useful later so default shading with edged faces on is my my standard uh, when I'm working but again you can always change between those uh, another thing if you hit the plus sign here you can turn grids on and off or change some of the kind of views there are these useful views um, that allow you to see like the statistics of a model 
which means how many polygons, how many vertices, for example. You can also show if you're or, uh, are working on 3D printing, you can look at face orientation to make sure all your faces are facing outward. You can also look where you have multiple edges or overlapping vertices. So a lot of these correspond to different issues you might have when you're 3D printing, and it will just help you know what you need to fix within your model if you're having printing issues. Um, if we go uh, down a little further, uh, we can change the quality. Right now we'll just stay on standard. Um, but you can also change if you're illuminating with the actual lights in your scene or just default lighting. So usually when you're modeling, you'll want to keep it on default lights just so you can see everything highly illuminated. But when you get close to rendering, you might change that to scene lights just to understand how your cameras and lights are behaving before you render. Um, again, different ways of viewing the object. You can look at it in a clay mode or, or default shading or flat color. Any of these work. So over on the right, this is your command panel. This is where you spend most of your time actually in 3ds Max. Um, and it's divided into a series of tabs. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. The first one is your create menu. And this is going to be all the objects you create within 3ds Max. The first um, uh, so once you open the tab, you get these little icons. The first icon corresponds to 3D geometry. So this will be all of your 3D geometries like boxes and cones and spheres and toruses. The next one is your lines. So this is all your 2D line work. And if you import uh, 2D lines from another software, they'll come in as splines. So you would edit them the same way that you would if you created them directly in 3ds Max. Um, so yeah, you can create lines, different kind of uh, rectangles, circles. The next one is lights. So all of your lights will be located under here, any kind of light you create. And then the next one is cameras. And then we have some objects we won't use too much of, but you can you know do points if you want. Uh, but Max doesn't really work with points as much as something like Rhino, for example, where you construct the object from points. In Max, you build the object, and then you modify it into the shape you want. Um, if we look back at this first create menu, um, you'll notice a drop down. So there's a lot of different things you can create here, including standard primitives like boxes, spheres. Um, you can create a little more complex uh, primitives like spindles and ring waves or hoses. You can also create compound objects. So these will be your booleans, for example, where you cut one object out of another object. You can also scatter objects on top of another object. And we'll talk about these a little bit later, but these are different ways of combining two or more objects into some kind of system of objects. Um, we also have particle systems, doors, windows. So you can do a lot of this stuff just from scratch directly in 3ds Max. Um, and so we'll cover that a little bit later. The next tab, so that's the Create tab. The next tab is the Modify tab. So once you have a box, like this box here, you can go to the Modify tab, and you'll see the geometry. Whatever geometry is selected will show up here. And then you can change the parameters of that geometry within the Modify tab. So like I mentioned, all of the objects in Max, you sort of put them into play, and then you transform them once they're there. So you can change the number of segments on a box. For example, if I go to default shading here and turn on edged faces, I can see those faces. And um, that's just going to show the number of faces on that geometry. So Max is very different than a program like Rhino, where Rhino works in NURBS and Max you're working with polygons. So you're actually working with these face and, and surface geometries. You're not defining mathematically uh, surface through a series of curves, you're actually just creating a faceted object. So even if you have a sphere, it's going to be a, fac a faceted sphere, and the more segments you have, the more sphere-like it will look. And the reason for that is Max is typically used for game design, um, and so you want to have low polygon models so that things can render and iterate very quickly. With something like NURBS, it takes a long time to calculate different changes to that surface, and it would just be way too slow in a real-time interactive environment. So a lot of software, like for movies and films, you'll see are polygon modelers and not NURBS-based. So anyway, if we go a little um, further into here, uh, into the modifier uh, tab, you can always change the name of your geometry. Or if you select from this drop down here, these are all the modifiers that you can apply to that geometry. So, for example, you can apply a bend modifier and then bend the geometry by changing parameters. Every time you add a modifier, so for example, if I add like a twist modifier um, and then add that, 
it uh, adds it to what's called the modifier stack. So this is your base object here, and then you add the bend modifier and then the twist. It's a little bit like layers, and it works um, from the top down. So for example, uh, if I go back to the box and I change the size of the box, it'll update everything above it um, after you make that change. So if I make this box longer, it'll still apply the bend to that longer box, and then it'll apply the twist to the bent box. And so you can always go into these and turn these off and, and, and on, depending on whether you want to see the effect of them. You can change different parameters. And all of this is inherently parametric. So you can change this, you know, change some things to the box, and then go back and adjust these things. And it's all retained within the history of the geometry. So you can always go back and change it. Um, a few other things you can do if you go to the third we, um, we'll talk about this later but you can affect the pivot location which is the kind of the um, pivot around which this object is moving and rotating and you could put that anywhere you want in a scene or on an object and you can do that by changing the uh, pivot using the effect pivot we'll talk about that a little later but that's the basics so that's the command panel um, the last thing is if you right click on an object you'll get what's called the pop-up or quad pop-up and this has just some other tools so some useful ones are, are like hiding you can um, hide the selected object you can right click in a scene you can unhide all that'll bring it back um, and then you can do other things like a move rotate scale which again are the same as this move rotate scale which are the same as edit this move rotate scale so again a lot of redundancy within the interface